We now have enough of a background to put it all together and simulate our first dynamic system. In an earlier video, we developed the notion of a dynamic system and the idea that it's an input-output relationship wherein the present output is a function of both present and past inputs. We learned that mathematically, a dynamic system can be expressed as a differential equation. We modeled an automobile's velocity when subject to a drag force and came up with the following ordinary differential equation. What we need to do now is to program this differential equation into Simulink so that it can run the simulations for us. With an ODE like this, the simplest way to do so is to rewrite it such that we isolate the highest output derivative on the left hand side. In this case, we have the following. Once you do this, it's important to view the form of the equation above all else. In other words, v dot, which is the highest output derivative, is isolated on the left hand side and is equal to the sum of two things. With this form in mind, we can start building our block diagram by beginning with a summing junction, which of course says that the output is equal to the sum of two inputs. For the time being, we can label what the signals are supposed to represent, then fill them in as we go. Let's start with this input on the left hand side. It's supposed to represent 1 over m times u. Since u is an external input, it will come from a source block in the library browser. We'll start with a constant value, but remember this block can be any type of input signal we wish to simulate. Then, to construct the full u times 1 over m signal, we need to multiply u by 1 over m. Knowing that 1 over m is a constant value, we can use a gain block to do inline multiplication. Now this signal does in fact represent 1 over m times u. We can now go to the next signal, minus b over m times v. If this signal is to represent a constant value times the velocity v, it's apparent that we'll need the velocity signal v. Looking at the output of the summing junction, we notice that we have v dot. Mathematically, the way to obtain v from v dot is to integrate the v dot signal. It sounds like a daunting task, and it would be to do by hand, but this is where the power of Simulink really starts to show. We know of a block that does integration. It's called the integrator block, and we can use it at will. Thus, the output of this integrator block is indeed the signal v, which represents the velocity of the vehicle. Since this is the output of the system, we also probably want to send this signal to the output via a sync block. It can be either a scope or a two workspace block, but we'll choose the latter since we want to analyze our data at a later time. Now going back to the other signal, we can use a gain block to do the inline multiplication of b over m, and it needs to be multiplied by v, which we can simply pick off from the output of the integrator. To address the negative sign, you can either use a gain of negative b over m, or you can simply change the sign in the summing junction to a negative value. Just make sure you don't do both, otherwise you'll end up with a double negative. Now, believe it or not, the block diagram is complete and exactly represents the ODE that we previously derived. Sketching the block diagram on paper, as we have done here, is a quick way to outline the block diagram, but we still need to actually input it into Simulink. Doing so is pretty simple. All we have to do is use the library browser that we explored in a previous video. Just drag and drop all of the required blocks and build the block diagram as you have sketched to complete the Simulink model. Remember, you'll need key blocks like the summing junction, the gain block, the integrator, an input from the sources submenu, and a two workspace block from the syncs menu. One other thing to note is that if you need to pick off a signal, like the velocity signal in this case, you can either start at the termination point and drag the signal back to the desired pickoff location, or you can hold control and click and drag starting at the desired pickoff location. Finally, remember to set your save format in the two workspace block to an array, and create a clock signal to keep track of the simulation time. 
Once you have the following block diagram in Simuli, you should save it with a descriptive name, like carvelocitysim.slx. Note that MATLAB M files and Simulink SLX files should not have the exact same name. We are now ready to start running some simulations, which we'll do in the next video.